Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to talk about the IG succession battle. Tension rises as Egbe Tokun's fate hangs on Tinubu's decision. Tensions are rising as the retirement date of Inspector General of Police Kayode Egbe Tokun approaches with uncertainty due to a recent amendment to the Police Act. The amendment passed by the National Assembly in July 2024 allows the president to extend the IGP's tenure beyond mandatory retirement age, but it has not yet been signed into law by President Tinubu. Several high-ranking police officers, including commissioners of police, assistant inspector generals, and deputy inspector general, are lobbying for the top position amid uncertainty about Equit Token's retirement. Concerns have been raised that extending Egbe Token's tenure could disrupt career progression within the police force and increase lobbying for positions. Now, joining us to discuss this is Augustine Ega. He's a security expert. And Samson Ajibadi, who's on the phone, he's a criminologist and also a security expert. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. So there are several concerns on this, even though, um, you know, the National Assembly, they had passed a bill about this. It hasn't been signed. There's a lot. But Augustine, I just want you to want you to walk us through this. And what's the possibility of um, even having someone like this who's supposed to be retired still being there or being his position, um, his time being extended for a while? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. I think this is not the first time that we are having this kind of experience. Mm. We had it uh, during the, uh, the last administration of the Boris regime, and that was the, the chief of staff, that's the Kwas. We had a situation like that, that he was there and there, and it affected uh, he, uh, the other colleagues that are supposed to progress mm. to that rank. And it caused a lot of, uh, uh, can, can I say, disunity among them and the government. Uh, and so uh, we've also had a situation where they have amended slightly to, uh, to favor people who work at that capacity because to my understanding, at that level is more of a political appointment. And so the president will want to be very comfortable with who he has as uh, the police chief. So those are, those are high level decisions that the president has a say. He has a say to it and he knows how to play that game from that angle. Okay. <clears throat> but how is it going to affect uh, affect us if he has to move? Because, like you said, when the last one was left in that position by the previous uh, president, uh, it caused disunity. So, wouldn't it just be better uh, when they were talking about this law even to extend the tenure of the of the of the IG? Why didn't people say something yeah. about about it that okay, we don't like it or we like it? Because if they like it, they should just be. Uh, comfortable with the fact that his tenure will expire after five years, and if they didn't like it, they should have said something about it. Well, to, my, uh, to my take, I think it's not a good thing for us. We should respect the rules, rules that have been laid down, because when we continue to do that, it's not very fair. It's not fair for our system. It shows that we have a system that can be manipulated even at the security level. It's not good for security. It's not, uh, we have a lot of brilliant minds that are standing by that could even do better than what he has done or add more value to what he has done. So people should be given uh, a chance. Whatever he has to do, he has been there and he has also shown, proved himself within a year. And so, but let the rules that have been laid down be followed. That's my candid opinion. Mm. Okay. All right, so let's come to you, um, Samson. Um, how do you think this would impact um, people in the police force? Because we're talking about disunity, we're talking about lobbying. Um, uh, what kind of disruption can we expect from this? Or is it going to put everybody together and say, oh, maybe at some point it could be my turn and they will just extend my own tenure as well? Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. This thing Nigeria and the system is not new to it. Even right from the days of uh, President Obama, Sojo, we had it when he extended uh, the tenure of uh, Sonia Inero. Yara also extended Mike uh, Mike Okiru's tenure. So we should even expect more if nothing is done. 
because of the system we have. Also, this tells us that the office of the IG, IGP, is a political position. Aside having brilliant minds, aside having uh, competent people, he is also competent. The reason he was he was uh, he was appointed in, in the first place. We also need to note that while we agitate, while we agitate, the law remains the law. We may not like it, but it remains the law. Although we are duty bound to call for an amendment or to get involved in amendments. Now, what am I trying to trying to say here? The Constitution and the Police Act is silent on the extension of the tenure of the IGP. It only makes so much. Uh, it, it only emphasizes. Uh, it, it emphasizes uh, uh, appointments and also dismissal of the IGP. But it never really uh, amad or say so much about the extension of the tenure of the IGP. The reason successive governments, I think it's not I think, only Jonathan didn't extend the tenure of, uh, of an IGP. Successive governments have always done that. So we should expect more if we do not speak up. However, many of these appointments, aside political interests, there's also sectional interests, or there are sectional interests attached to it. You see, when a, a particular child is appointed an IGP, you see uh, an ethnic group coming out to issue press statements, our son is now this, our son is now that. Is this where we want to be as a nation? When other countries there, where they are even saying that the, uh, the, the tenure of, or the age, that means age, should be brought down to 55, or even 30 years. Now, unemployment is there. We need to know that the public service it is an essential service arm. It is why it gives services and satisfaction to the people, to the masses. It also gives employment to the people. Retaining, uh, extending its tenure could also affect the employment of some other other persons. Probably there is also uh, politics at play here because uh, I think uh, Siroma, one of the, the, the DIGs, will retire very soon, early early twenty twenty five. Probably the government is trying to sideline some people from getting to that position. However, since the days of, uh, of who was there? Jonathan, when he appointed Ab uh, Suleiman Abbas as the IG, successive governments after them have always appointed, many of them have always appointed AIGs as to the position of the, the IG. So, what I'm saying here is this probably. They are trying to sideline some people from getting to that position. Because when it goes, when IG Abeto Kun goes now, IGP Abeto Kun is now, probably some of the DIGs will come in, but so, from what we've had, the experience we've had, many of the IGPs are also retired and they bring in AIGs to fill in the position of the IGP so that they will have a much more uh, longer tenure. So it will affect. The system that is the politicization of the police, the politicization of the military, and even the employment opportunities. The bill emphasized on some of the reasons they gave for bringing the DP are not too tenable. They said to, receive, to review the service years of police personnel in order to, re, to improve experience and expertise of police workforce, retain experienced personnel, and reduce the cost of training and recruiting new officers. So when these people age, the, the, the security profession is for those who are sound, physically and even mentally, as you age, as people age, their health deteriorates. So now, if you are retaining older people in the system, if you are retaining older people in the system, how do you bring in new minds, qualified people, those who would embrace technology? Many of these people were, were employed in the 80s and in the, in the 90s. When, uh, when uh, the internet was very backward, though they've been trained, but bringing in people, bringing in uh, tech-oriented or ICT-oriented people at this time would give the police a good image or a renewed image as their agenda is. Okay, so in your, in your, in your opinion, this uh, bill before the president for accent should not be signed. 
Because if it is signed, all this talk will not be there because it will give the current IGP the time to serve up to four years, up uh, to five years, no matter what the situation is, whether it has, he has reached retirement or anything, it will give him five years to serve. Do you think the president should sign it or not? Okay, let me just say it straight. It should not be signed. But I said that the law is the law. You know, the previous IG, IGPs, they've always had litigation upon litigation. In fact, the, the last one, uh, during the inquiry's time, the court declared, the court declared that the that the appointment was illegal. Now, also in 20, 2021, when uh, what was the name of this IGP? When he was appointed, the court, another court, a coordinate court, also said that the appointment is legal. So, conflicting court orders could affect the system here. President uh, Buhari on the 4th of February 2021 extended the tenure of Mohamed Abubakar as the IGP of police by three months after the mandatory retirement of 35 years. But then litigation came up and they went to the courts. And a justice in Abuja there supported the, the extension. Also, years later, 2023, another court also went against it, supported it in the first place. Another court of uh, coordinate jurisdiction notified it. So, for us to fight against this uh, conflicting court judgment or court orders, we need to implement the law. We need to, to enact it. The reason the house is coming up with laws to back up their, their actions. So now, if it becomes a law, no matter the level of litigation, it will still become the law. So, therefore, this law, this bill, should not be signed. Let the ID go and let them go and enjoy. There are better opportunities outside the place. But this tells you that the position is juicy, but they wouldn't tell the masses. They wouldn't tell us, but they will keep complaining to us. This bill should not be signed by the president. Augustine, Augustine you also what that, do you hear? Yeah. Do you also say it should not be signed? Augustine, can you hear me? Do you also, are you also you share the same you? opinion? Yes. So, do you think it should also not be signed? It should not. It should never. Should never ever be signed. Hmm. We have a law that exists, and the law is for everyone, not to a certain extent where you pay both one man and then you go and, uh, and 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 redefine the law. Let the law remain the law of the land. If you retire, if you retire, go home and rest, and give opportunity for people to come in. Oh, there's a security expert talking, so we don't <laughs> want... Uh, but just clear us on this matter. It, uh, we seem to hear that uh, when someone is appointed to that position, the people of the same cadre with him mm. get retired so yeah. that there will not be any tussle of, of any sort. Is that true? Well, we, we, we agree that uh, uh, such place become a, a very political... Normally, in... in, in in a situation where you become like the chief of security in any establishment, even in a private uh, position, you, the, 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 whoever that is your, your executive, the executive that you report to, will always find someone who is comfortable with because there are a lot of uh, confidentiality that you hold, a lot of things that, that you want the person to do for you. Especially now, I agree that Mr. President will be going for a second term. And that is not possible if you don't have the right mandate to work for you. Let us be very straightforward about this. And that is why I'm very sure that is the reason he wants to amend everything to put his mandate to do it for him. But it is not always the best. He should look around and see that uh, he gives opportunity to people around. They are very sound minds, and like, like the first speaker have said. We should give opportunity to people who are tech savvy that will come in and reform uh, the, the Nigerian police. We really need it. And so it should not be because of your own selfish interests and we continue to amend laws to favor yourself. The court will do nothing, no matter how much, how many times they go uh, to appeal in the court. We will see that it will end up without anything. What Mr. President has decided is what will be. But Mr. President should be very democratic. He should know that this government, no matter how you receive the power, we are still watching. The people are interested in seeing that he does the right thing. It doesn't matter how he has reached there. Yes, he has reached there by any means that he feels that he has gotten there. But let him adjust and do the right thing. 
It is not the best for our, for, our, for, our, for our country. Let us respect the rule of law. Let us respect the rule of law. All right. So, Samson, um, looking at the current state of, of insecurity in Nigeria, how it has played, especially um, in the past one year, where you're seeing school children being abducted, where you're seeing terrorists, um, you know, just doing whatever they want to do, and you're not really seeing anybody being persecuted as much as you would want or as much as you, as you would like to hear. Do you think that the current IG of police is doing such a great job to extend its tenure, or this is the the time that we're bringing someone who is even more tech savvy like Augustine has said and someone who will just transform the entire um, police force to ensure that we're tackling insecurity the way we need to also thank you also do, do I think that the the next IGP would address this insecurity that would mm. be another question. But mm. I think that everyone was coming. Because substantive ones have no, it is a political position. They just go there to probably enjoy, uh, prepare for retirement and mm. just do all sorts of things. These people cannot end insecurity. We need to know this. IGPs cannot end insecurity. Uh, military chiefs will not, service chiefs generally, will not end insecurity. Insecurity will only end when the president, the commander in chief, is ready to end insecurity. And I have always maintained here that insecurity that persists is a business. That is the economy that comes with it. That's the economy that comes with it, sorry. That's the economy that comes with it. And this law, this bill, if it is trying to extend the tenure of the IGP, it is not also increasing the recruitment age for people coming. We also need to know this. Now, this one, this bill here, if you are extending the tenure of the police or the IGP, which is also just one of the arms of the security, uh, security, uh, security, what happens to other arms? What happens to the, to the, to the NSCDC, to the uh, army, to the military and all like that? What happens to them? So, Extending the tenure to decade, uh, decades or 20 years' time, it will not stay any security. Insecurity will only end when the leader, the, uh, the first among equals, the commander in chief, is ready to end insecurity. Because only the police are not even it, but it is just the willpower of anyone who rules the executive. Yeah. Austin, when you were talking, it was there was some kind of indictment that I I heard, like uh, hey, the president might want to go for a second tenor, so he wants someone who is comfortable, he's comfortable with, so that that can uh, come to be. Uh, it seems as if uh, it seems as if you are agreeing to the fact that it's possible that the police is being used as political tools when it comes to elections. Does that say anything about about uh, in, independence? This, this is not only this is not only only in Nigeria. It happens in other countries. The executive will always try as much as possible to influence the decisions, the actions of the various institutions of government. But the last time I was here, I talked about separation of powers. In a society where there is separation of powers, that will not work. But for a country like Nigeria, no, it happens in all other countries. Look at not just in African countries, even other. Uh, other bigger countries. You see them. Go, look at Russia, look at many of these bigger countries. You will see them. The president will try to influence the decision, the actions and inactions of the other organs or institutions of government. But I say, as long as the president is the one who appoints into, uh, into uh, who appoints the IGP and other officers, this position remains a political position and they will all, always be political. That is it. But the second tenor of, uh, of the president is his right. He has the right to it. It is not unlawful. It's, he has the right to it. When they are saying that we should bring down, we should extend the tenor of the IGP, they are not looking at those coming in, maybe to extend their, their age, the current age, or also reduce the retirement age of president and other political office holders. I think these people, they need, they need to be logical enough to look at laws. How would this affect the price of things in the market? How would this, uh, uh, how would this address injustice? 
a society. Because if injustice is not addressed, insecurity will become a norm. That is it. Mm. So we need to address insecurity and uh, injustice first before we begin to talk about security and core security. Okay, so any final words from you, Augustine, on, you know, what should be done about this and how we can start to address all of these things? Uh, the best way is that they should follow the rule of law. Mm. No one should continue to manipulate the law to favor himself. That's my word. All right. Yeah, thank, All right you. thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, thank you for coming and discussing this with us. Thank you. Thank you. Have yeah. a wonderful day. Have a nice day. All right, so we've been speaking with Augustine Egger. He's a security expert and Samson Ajibade. He's a criminologist and a security expert. And we've just been discussing the fact that tension is rising amidst the IGP succession battle. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about the presidential debts that Biodun consults federal government as Tommy tackles Amosun. Please stay with us.